Okay, so I actually have a videographer today. I'm gonna flip this around. Where is he? Hey, look who it is. <laughs> Nobody's on yet, so if you flip it around for me, perfect. Okay, all right, good evening, everybody. I have been wanting to do a video about water, of all things, for a while. And I have a Roman free evening, and I thought this is the time to do it. So check out all this craziness that I got going on on my table here. And guys, what hit me one day, I walked down the water aisle of my grocery store and I realized that this doesn't even scratch the surface of the different waters that are out there. And for years and years and years, I have been drinking out of a gallon plastic jug distilled water. Why, may you ask? Well, a couple reasons. The ga I was part of the gallon jug club because that really got me to get all my water in. And I, don't, don't knock that technique until you try it. I still love it. However, we're drinking out of plastic and we'll talk about that. But my good friend, Christine Yoder, look at this. She got me a half gallon jug Yeti stainless steel. So I have adopted this as well as another technique that I just put on my blog that I'm going to show you. And we're going to talk about our pH and um, some coincidentics products too that I love to integrate to help keep me not acidic. And I'll tell you how and why I became really acidic and what happened to me um, in a little bit. So anywho, what you need to know about water and how it impacts you. First and foremost, are you drinking out of the tap? And I'm gonna just put it out there, the tap is crap. Um, because it depends on where you live and the regulations that your, the, your city puts on that tap water, what is or is not filtered out. So, um, I was talking to Tara Klossing about this and she specifically, I think got, if Tara, if you're on there, um, got tested with this and you want to be very cautious because some waters can actually have ph pharmaceutical drugs in them. What? I know. So that leads me to the Brita, which I forgot to put on my table, but we all know what the Brita water filter looks like. That's what most people have. Um, so with the Brita water filter, that is a gravity fed filter and it's, it, it's good, it's better than tap water, but you'll go through the filters pretty quickly. You should change them out when the little light blinks or whenever that your sticker is expired. Um, that is important, but it, it gets out some impurities, but not too much. But again, it's better than tap. So, okay, let's, let's uh, think about the benefits. Now, I wanna go back to the distilled water thing. I started drinking it um, because I didn't wanna drink fluoride in my water. That's another conversation right there. Um, but I really like the taste of distilled water. Guys, I'm gonna tell you I'm a water snob. I can't wait to taste all these waters. That's how crazy I am. Next, if I was on a deserted island and you gave me two things, I would want my favorite water and red wine. So for those of you who know me, that should come as no shock. Okay, so um, let's kind of go through the list. And I have this written out. I will tell you this, I am, um, super got inspired by my girl Shalene Johnson so she's always a good person to follow but um I did an, a little experiment too with my Isogenics coffee and my amp hydrates so I don't want to forget about that but anyway we talked about tap we talked about the Brita your gravity fed um filter we did not talk about the regular old bottled water now this is the stuff that I sell at my studio this is better than tap and it's water at our convenience. And typically, hey, when you're in a pinch, you, you want to hydrate yourself. Um, so I was looking on this company's website just to see, you know, how do they filter their water and if they do. It sounds pretty good, but it's also kind of like misleading with what spring their water is coming out of. Like it's, I don't know. I want you guys to research your bottled water. If you if you buy just bottles of water and plastic, something to think about, just like with my distilled water and plastic, how long that these bottles sat on the bed of a truck, the temperature, and um, it's well known that the different plastic, the chemicals in the plastic can leach into our water. Um, again, we can't live in a bubble, but it's a matter of like how much and how often are we drinking out of these things that can be uh, potentially hazardous to our health. Okay, so let's move on down the line. Dan, do we have anyone watching us? We do. Oh, we do, good, great. So this is, this is helpful, guys. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to do this segment on uh, channel two tomorrow. 
and I was all gun ho and I prepped for this for like three hours and they were like, oh no, you know what, we already had someone do that before, the, the registered dietitian they used. So I was sad about that because I'm very excited to share with you guys this. So I thought, I need to do this Facebook Live. So anyway, the distilled water. So this distilled water that I got at Giant Eagle the other day, this is distilled and it's actually, they put some electrolytes back in there. So what does that mean? I want to make, make sure that I'm clear on this. Distilled water is boiled water that condenses the steam back into liquid to remove impurities and minerals. So the, the pros of this, it's better than tap. It has detoxification uh, benefits to drinking it um, for a period of time. Um, now when I drink copious and copious amounts of distilled water, I love the taste. I, I never noticed any uh, that I was depleted in any type of um, mineral. You know, I didn't really ex exhibit any symptoms, but what, for the different research that is out there, they talk about that if you drink this uh, long term, it can actually remove some healthy minerals, leaving uh, the water more acidic. And also it can increase the risk of leaching minerals from the body. So that was new to me. I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? Yeah, a lot of times people think that, oh, if you drink distilled water, you're not getting your fluoride, which, you know, I think a lot of us are aware of um, the cons of having fluoride in our water. So we can, again, save that for another day. But let's talk about pH for a minute. I wasn't really ever concerned about pH because I didn't exhibit symptoms of being acidic until I did a, another little dietary experiment on myself um, about oh, two months ago and I got the worst ulcer in my mouth that was so bad that I couldn't even eat dinner, which for me, I mean, that's bad. Unless it's a cleanse day, you know, I'm ready for dinner. So I, ha I got this really bad ulcer. I was getting other ulcers. I um, broke out an eczema, which I'm still trying to get rid of. And my pH, I, I was, it was off. So it had nothing to do with my water. It was specifically dietary. And I know that because of my um, dietary experiment that I was doing based on other research that I've been looking into. Um, so cleansing has really helped me get back um, my pH and get balanced through natural healing. But um, I tested my pH the other day and this was after I drank this coffee. So a lot of times we think coffee is very acidic. And the last celebration I went to, um, maybe two, two celebrations ago, they released Lysogenics coffee. Now some of you might be like, whatever Aubrey, coffee's coffee, or I love my coffee, I love my Keurig. I gotta tell you something about coffee. So if I could bring three things on the deserted island, it would be my favorite water, my favorite red wine, and my favorite coffee. The cool thing what Isogenics has done with their coffee, which is very affordable by the, the way, it's organic and that means it has a very low level of any of those pesticides that are sprayed on regular coffee. Regular coffee has up to 15 pesticides on it. Um, they actually balance the pH of this stinking coffee to be the same pH as your mouth. So it's not um, as harmful on your teeth, on your enamel. And they did that because I think they laced it with a little coconut oil and green tea. How cool is that? And I have definitely noticed a difference drinking this coffee compared to other coffees, even my organic coffees, because we, we uh, swap in and out. But my experiment was um, the other day, some of you might have seen this Facebook post if you care to read my post, but um, I woke up at three in the morning. I don't know what the heck was going on. It was like the blood moon was affecting me. And I woke up at three in the morning, couldn't go back to bed. And psychologically, I thought, Aubrey, you're gonna need a lot of coffee today. And um, I was not tired. But it was kind of my excuse because I was up at three. I drank four cups of coffee that day, okay? Confessions. And it was the Isogenics coffee. And I'm like, I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to test my pH. So if you didn't know, um, your pH should be about 7.35 to 7.4 would be where you're in that happy homeostasis point, okay? And I tested my pH. This was after the four cups of coffee. And I was 7.4. I was so excited. And I thought, that's a pretty cool experiment to try with a coffee. Now, you might not react like that. I don't know. But that's my little plug to try their coffee. I think it's like $14 a bag. And um, I don't use the Keurig anymore because my husband got me this kick-ass espresso machine. So um, that's what we, what we use um, for our coffee. 
the, so that's my pitch there. These pH strips, you can get them probably at like any GNC or obviously Amazon has everything. But um, these guys are pretty nice to just kind of spot check yourself. I think also when I knew my pH was off, again, you have these different symptoms that your body's acidic. All right, um, let's go on to our other waters. And I also want to talk about my new mason jar technique on how you can get more water in. Um, so before we go into these other guys here that I'm sure you're just thirsting to know uh, more about, um, my mason jar technique. Each of these mason jars contains four cups of liquid, okay? And if you want to go by the eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day, that is half of a gallon, which if you're not exercising, that's probably plenty for you. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic and other you know, facilities that produce this research, um, they, they still stand behind the eight, eight ounce glasses a day. So if you're not making that minimum right now, Try the mason jar technique because I, I felt like it's not that intimidating. And you know what I put in this water? So this is my special um, filtered water, which I'll talk, I'll tell you guys about the filter that we have that you might want to look into. But I put that in there and I got a little bit of my um, pure lime juice and lemon juice because I just don't feel like squeezing them anymore. Um, but this is really convenient for me. So it costs a little bit more money, but that's how I roll. So I put a little bit of that in there. And then I put a smidge of whatever amped hydrate I'm in the mood for right now. It just happens to be orange. I like the lemon lime though a lot too. I haven't done grape with the with that yet, but anyway, so you can try this. And then if you're just so daring and you want to make it taste like a margarita minus the tequila, you could put a, a little dash of some pink Himalayan sea salt, which from what I have read, this is the gold standard of all our salts and contains, um, sodium chloride, the mineral that we need to help balance our electrolytes. All right, so if you make that little recipe, I guarantee you this is not gonna be that intimidating. You are gonna chug this down and, and be thirsting for more because I've been doing this for the past um, couple weeks and it, I mean, I get my gallon in, not gonna lie, but I get it in way faster when I kind of jazz up my water. And guys, there's so many different ways to jazz it up. Like I think cucumber and watermelon is probably my fave. Um, but again, the hydrate is so good, especially if you are sweating your butt off with your workouts. This is crucial. You're, you're losing a lot of important um, minerals. So um, I definitely recommend having the hydrate on hand. Okay, so we're back to the aguas and uh, sparkling water. Um, has anybody been over to Europe recently? Um, this is huge. This is huge, okay? Um, Sparkling mineral water, that was all uh, really people drank over in Italy and so many um, times we accidentally bought the sparkling stuff. Okay, so here's the deal about sparkling water. The pros, it's water and um, it is carbonated so that it can make us feel gassy or bloated. Um, some things that I have uh, read in the past suggest that it can extrapolate calcium from the bones if that's all you're drinking. Now, is it bad? No, but this one is a mineral water um, with its natural carbonation and so they put little mineral they put more minerals in here like magnesium bicarbonate sodium chloride potassium and sulfate and then quote unquote other minerals so this could be something i think like a here and there type of water if this is your only water choice i would be cautious of that because of the carbonation okay um, a little sidebar, my husband randomly bought this Alchemax, that's an alkaline booster. And so let's say you don't have a home water filter, you don't have a Brita, I, who doesn't have a Brita? I don't know. But um, what, the, what this does, it just puts some minerals back into your water, in essence, to try to balance, help you balance your pH out better. So this has magnesium and uh, chloride in it. Um, don't drink this without water. I tried it and it tastes disgusting. So you have to put some drops in there. Anyway, um, do do do. But all these other things also, again, that's why I love this product because it does it all. Okay, as I digress, um, I didn't buy the vitamin water. I didn't. I didn't get that. But we've all seen the vitamin water before. Yeah. Um, it's just water with added vitamins and minerals, which that sounds all great, but it's dyed. And it's also synthetic vitamins, so I don't. I really don't think that you're absorbing those, but that's for you to research as well. I didn't have time to do all that. Okay, now the 
other water that I was checking out, check this out. So I told you that your pH is seven point, needs to be 7.35 or 7.4. And this agua is a pH of 9.5, okay? Alkaline ionized um, spring water. And I thought, well, why, why? What does that do? And on their website, it claims that most people, if you're having, if you eat a sad diet, which no one in this group does, I know, sad meaning the standard American diet, um, but if you know someone who has the sad diet, we all probably do, that apparently they say that this is gonna help lift your pH so that then you become more alkaline. I don't know, maybe if you can have um, your buddy who has the sad diet give this a try and see how they feel something to consider but um really i thought this was a good um option i'm excited to actually taste it and how they um this is a reverse osmosis uh, ionized water and that's what our water filter does so we'll talk about that um we talked about plastic and the cons oh th the benefit of this guy this is in glass okay so that's nice all right, glass, and that's why I like the mason jars in glass, and I like the Yeti stainless steel. Um, boxed water, this one was new, and talk about smart marketing, boxed water is better. I am sure that this company is kicking some ass, because that's just, they just put it out there, just like that. I'm gonna say that about everything I do. Everything I do is better. <laughs> Maybe we should all try that. Okay, um, but this is purified water. So purified water is a, is a really good option, but this would be something just like the other bottled water. I would say if you're curious, if you're like a water snob like me, jump on the company's website, see how they purify it. Um, to me, that's maybe more of an umbrella term. Um, so I hope that you guys aren't falling asleep. Hang in there. What's this last one? Oh, and guys, this last one, this was another um, perfect pH. There's so many waters when I walked through the store that was like, this is the perfect pH. And I thought, what the heck, what does that mean? I don't know enough about this. This is another reverse osmosis one. It's in plastic, so that's a con, but um, they add their electrolytes and minerals in there. So that is nice. Now what our filtration system does, and this is one of the filters that um, Deanna's installed under our kitchen sink. And I've fallen in love with the reverse osmosis plus alkaline water filter. What this does is it adds uh, the calcium and magnesium back into the water after it filters it. How cool is that? So that it creates that perfect pH. And that's what we pretty much use. And um, you could get a filter like that for under 200 bucks. And um, the filters will last anywhere from six months to about two years. Um, there's different filters on them. So it depends on what option you want to go with. Uh, you know, if you are wanting to do the Rolls Royce version, that's kind of what we, we have. I know I have a friend that she has a water filtration system for her whole home, which that is great. I would like to do that at some point and ba be bathing in the, the best water because our skin is the largest organ. We know that. Um, let's see. So if you guys want, I can post other options of different water filters. I know, I think uh, Tara has the big Berkeley filter. It filters fluoride out. And um, ours, by the way, if you were curious, is the Kohler Max six stage reverse osmosis and alkaline filtered water. And that one cost $175 and the filters are about $40. So it depends what you want to budget for. Again, we have all these different techniques and different waters. And we learned a little bit about pH today and how I integrate isogenics into this. And um, long story short, um, I revealed to some of my clients, I was experimenting with, um, you know, just kind of eating totally what, what's really like, I don't want to say up and coming because it reminds me of Atkins, but a lot of people are talking about the keto diet and everything, which is great and it can really work for them. For me, it, it really didn't. And um, that's when I became really acidic. Now, I think a little bit of everything is um, good to know and try but I um, really am successful with my cleanse days. So that helps me reset my mind, reset my body, and I think uh, has helped me with my pH. So um, I hope this was informative. I think that it was pretty educational. Drink your damn water, stay hydrated. If you haven't tried the coffee and you're a coffee drinker, what are you waiting for? Um, other than that, gang, any questions out there? No questions, okay. 
have a, a oh um something new with isogenics that's coming out the essential oils i don't know enough about essential oils i'm excited to learn about them i know that i have a, um, some essential oils at my studio that i just started to use and i, lo I love that um, my sister bought me a diffuser so everything isogenics does is top-notch quality i'm really pumped to learn more about them and how i can integrate them if you're already a, an essential oils fan uh, research them yourself we'd love to hear your opinion and let's give them a shot guys why not if you're an oil oily type of person let's keep it going we will be doing um probably another september shred i know it's crazy to think like that uh coming up this fall just stay motivated stay active in the group post your dinners post your any recipe hacks that you find and um, make sure you let me know when you're doing your next cleanse day because I got your back. See you soon.